Extinction Rebellion shut down 60 cities globally, protesting against world leaders' inertia in the face of the escalating climate crisis. And look, we've been no better at prioritising this issue here. This is the final episode of the series, and every week we start writing... Sorry to break the illusion, but we write this. It isn't improvised. I don't just rock up and say, turn on the camera, pop the suit on NK47, and it's all aboard the Rift train. Toot, toot! <laughs> Even that bit was written. We start writing, I say, look, we've got to talk about the environment. And every week we end up focusing on one word. I think you know the word I'm talking about. It starts with a B and ends with us turning Buckingham Palace into a Trump hotel to prop up our collapsing economy. <laughs> but like the governments of the world, we can no longer ignore the issue. A global climate movement, largely energised by younger people, has pushed this crisis to the forefront of people's minds. On Friday, 16-year-old campaigner Greta Thunberg may even win the Nobel Peace Prize, although I feel like she's probably going to lose to Fleabag. That thing <laughs> is winning everything right now. Bad luck, Greta. You may have spearheaded a global movement, but you didn't incorporate a hot priest. People love a hot priest. <laughs> Despite their main aim being to make sure we don't all die, the protesters were criticised, even by the Prime Minister, who took time out from his busy schedule of ceaseless incompetence to call them <laughs> uncooperative crusties. Now, firstly, how are you supposed to protest cooperatively? It's been a peaceful protest in which road blockades have taken measures to ensure emergency services are unaffected. But look, a protest is supposed to be a disruption. How far would the civil rights movement have got if Rosa Parks had said, oh, sorry, the back of the bus? Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and as for crusties, there was a lot of hippie shit going on. Yeah, I'll admit that. Was some of it ridiculous? Yeah, of course it was. There were even people doing protest yoga at one point. <laughs> and I'd like to thank them for observing the ancient Indian yoga tradition of having bagpipes playing in the background. <laughs> Namaste, and indeed, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, some of it is a bit silly. But you know what's sillier? Inaction in the face of overwhelming scientific evidence. Whatever you think of them, these hippies have scientific backing. It wasn't like that in the 60s. Listen, I love the song Blowing in the Wind, but it's not scientifically accurate. The only thing blowing in the wind is a combination of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide and small amounts of other gases. Not, Mr Dillon, the answer. <laughs> And there were legitimate criticisms. This iteration of the global climate movement has been criticised for being the preserve of wealthy white people. Galdem magazine has observed that not enough has been done to highlight activists like Autumn Peltier, Artemisa Chakraba, Helena Hualinga and Marie Kopeni and Isra Hersey, amongst many, many others. At the moment, Extinction Rebellion may be dominated by people from a particular socio-economic group. But firstly, that will change. And secondly, I'm just pleased that this is how people from that background are choosing to spend their time. Bear in mind, when groups of rich white people get together, it's normally to hunt foxes or colonise my ancestors. <laughs> The heaviest criticism has come from some sections of the press, in particular columnists who are known to us as members of the arsehole community, or as they prefer, people of arsehole. <laughs> some journalists, and I use that word incorrectly, have even called <laughs> Extinction Rebellion a death cult. Listen, if it's a death cult, it's a shit death cult. They're trying to keep us alive. Also, you can leave at any time. I've been in mobile phone contracts that are harder to get out of, but I've never called Tesco Mobile a text cult or chat prison. <laughs> The Mail on Sunday called protesters warmed over communists and the Telegraph described the movement as a global elite sham. The day after publishing this article, the investment trust that will pay you 75k over the next decade on an initial sum of just 100k. Just 100k! You can't accuse anyone of being an elite if you also publish a phrase so elitist it falls somewhere between let's take my other helicopter and help, my butler had an opinion! <laughs> now look, I would like to address the right-wing press, and in particular, the people of Arsehole. Guys, I know you don't watch this show, but maybe you're overhearing this coming from the bedroom of your son who is definitely going through a phase. <laughs> Perhaps you're seeing this on the Facebook feed of a cousin you suspect is a vegan. Look. <laughs> I know you're unwilling to engage with climate change. And it makes sense. Your owners either have interests more vested than Bruce Willis in Die Hard, or they just deny climate change instinctively because they're essentially the nation's racist granddads. <laughs> but maybe if you'd stop being snarky to some well-meaning hippies and some actual children, you'd realise 
this is what you've been training for. Because what does the climate movement need? It needs people and governments to start taking action. Because there is a climate catastrophe coming and we all need to be more scared. And what do you like doing? Scaring the shit out of people. <laughs> you spent years treating everything like it's the end of the world. And it's weird that you're not doing that for the actual end of the world. <laughs> You've made people afraid of immigrants, house prices, avocados, Chris Morris, drill music, burnt toast, video games, busy roads, judges, baby food, their own neighbours, women, continental Europe, Meghan Markle, binge drinking and not binge drinking. <laughs> You've done incredible work. If there was a Nobel Prize for terror, <laughs> Fleabag would still win, but you deserve it. <laughs> so please, for the love of God, use your powers for good and scare old white people, because I can't do it alone. <laughs>